serve people. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, rejoice, and be glad in it. Lord, we ask that you would tabernacle with us, that you would accept these praise offerings that we bring to you as a sweet, savory offering, one that is pleasing and delightful to you, Lord. One that we give in obedience and in love. Because you first came to us. Because you first loved us. Because you saved us. And you continue to keep us. We are so thankful. As we enter into the service, we are reminded that we must be prepared. So, Lord, we pray that your spirit would move within us, that we might acknowledge and know that we need to move all sorts of stuff at once out of the way so that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. For you are spirit, and you must be worshiped in truth. And if we come before you any other way, feeling as if we have no sin, then we have lied. Give us ears to hear and a spirit of discernment that we might know and be able to accept what is being rightly divided. And your word might penetrate hearts of those who have rejected you, that your word might penetrate and exude a sense that long to hear, that your word might refresh us, and that your spirit might be a lifter to all. And Father, as we know that salvation rests on perfect work of the law through your son Christ Jesus. We thank you for such a day. Because we're covered with that blood and that we have been washed with the blood of the Lamb. Be with us now as you would have us. Accept our praise and our worship. For it is in the name of your son Christ Jesus that we do pray. on agape let's sing God's praises sing God's praises agape hallelujah the word says make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with thanksgiving with joyful singing we just lift up the name of Jesus on this morning oh he is good and he's worthy to be praised come on put your hands together I command my soul to bless the Lord I command my soul to bless the Lord I command my soul to bless the Lord I command my Oh, Lord. 
There's a lot happening in our world. And when, a, when there's a lot going on, we need to be centered. We need to look to our resources that come from above. So I'm excited to look at God's word this morning. I, I am aware that we're having some technical difficulties, but we're going to go forward in the name of the Lord and continue to do what God has called us to do. Let's look to the Lord's word. It's coming from the epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 17 through 27. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 27. If you have your Bible, now is a good time to get it out. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, and you will find words in your scriptures that are similar to these. Verse 17. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. 
They have become callous and have been given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. This is the word of the Lord. It is prayer time in the sanctuary. And this morning we turn to our God who has power, strength, and healing. We pray this morning for Joe Palin, as the Lord has called his wife home to glory. Cheryl, we lift up that family, his daughters, and that family. So many others have been affected by this coronavirus. But today we also lift up our nation, our world, all the things that are taking place, the killing of a, an African American man hollowed out from the depths of his heart, I can't breathe. And so on Friday, I received a letter from Rabbi Gregory Marks of Congregation Beth Or, and from Pastor Enton, the Wissick and Faith community. Lord, I would read we ask the letter that you would tabernacle with us. That Rabbi Marks sent, and Reverend Tripp Lyman read the letter that the president of the Wissick and Faith community sent. Dear Pastor Kwan, today is a Jewish holiday, Shabbat. This is a day when we commemorate the receiving of the Torah on the top of Mount Sinai. Our community will be gathering in virtual prayer this morning. But before we begin, I feel compelled to reach out to you to express on behalf of our community my total outrage at the death of George Floyd. If anyone should doubt the reality of racism and anti-Semitism in today's world, they need to look no further than Minneapolis. George Floyd's wrongful death under the knee of a police officer. It's not only murder, it is symptomatic of the racists that exist in our country. We cannot remain silent in the face of this brutality against black people. We know that this is nothing new. There is sadly too much hate and bigotry in this world. But we must change in the silence and indifference in these outrages. We stand with you combination in the condemnation of this blatant murder. Pastor Rabbi Gregory Marks. This statement is from the president of the Wissick and Faith Community Association. Dear colleagues in faith, it is with great sorrow that we have seen the images of the death of George Floyd and are now seeing the varied responses of our leaders and local communities. Floyd's death is a stark reminder that racism is not behind us. Indeed, the responses of some of our elected officials confirm our fears that prejudices are being stoked to political ends. May we pray for a peace based not on suppression of protests, but on a shared commitment to greater righteousness. 
May our prayers call us to our own actions to continue to combat racism and prejudice in the many places we encounter it. May we hold our elected officials accountable for the ways they divide us. May we confront our systemic sin of considering any of God's children less than some others. Even while confessing our own failures and prejudices to love one another despite our differences. And may we work for healing through the following the paths towards justice and accountability. Let us pray that the senseless death of another black person awakens our national consciousness so that we might change. We also pray for the violent protests to end. May the depth of that anger and anguish galvanize the rest of us with an iron resolve to address the evils that have once again been revealed to be so prevalent in our country. Inton Eller, president of the Wissahickon Faith Community Association. You've heard these two letters, but now I want to share with you from my heart. And as an African-American husband and father, I grieve today with our nation and our world this ungodly killing is just a symptomatic reminder that racism still exists in every form and facet in this country. Not just police officers, but in the White House, in Congress, in the Senate, in the judicial system, in the economic system, in our world, we cannot remain silent, nor can we condone violence, looting, and robbing. We must protest, but it always has to be done in a way that honors God and honors one another. Even as we protest, individuals are using this for their own agenda. It's been reported that people from other states have come to Philadelphia, to other parts of the country with their own agenda. It's even been reported that Nazis and others have come to infiltrate so that they might gain. Last week, I wrote a letter to the Amna Gazette about the need to vote. A fellow clergyman took me to task said, how could I not separate church and state? This issue is at the heart of who we are. Yes, I'm a preacher. I know what God has called me to do, to speak out against injustice, and declare that those who are ungodly need to be called to account. And so once again, I firmly stand behind my words that we need to change the one in the White House. We have an opportunity to do that on this Tuesday. For him to say he's ready to release vicious dogs and has all kinds of ammunition is not the statement we need to hear from the President of the United States. Yes, I'm saddened heartbroken that a peaceful demonstration has turned into violence in our city. Even as we deal with this coronavirus, people who wore no masks, didn't have concerns for one another, have taken this issue away from coronavirus and now place it in the heart of those who want to use it against us. I pray today that you will join me in praying for the word of God is clear. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their land. We need healing in this land. We need to change the course that we're on. A course does not allow us to be free human beings. This racist society has lasted 
for generations after generations. The sad note is that's even passed on to our younger children. So when they see us, they fear us, they dislike us, they hate us. And we cannot turn hate into hate. We have to stand by the word of God. Every police officer is not a racist. Every politician is not a racist. But we do have racist people in our society in all walks of life. We need to call them out. We cannot turn against one another. For those who are against us, we need to declare that we speak loud and clear. When you see something, say something. And we're saying right now that this country is in the wrong direction. And we ask God to grant to us the peace, the power to make a difference. Whenever we see racism, speak out loud and clear against it. Don't be intimidated, but speak out boldly when you see it. And walk in peace and harmony so our protests will not be taken in the wrong context. We need to make our voices felt. Thank God for those pastors and preachers who are not ashamed to declare that this is wrong, this is ungodly, and we stand together shoulder to shoulder fighting against racism, anti-Semitism, and anything that will destroy another human being. We need God, and we believe in God, and we have not come this far by faith, trusting God by ourselves. So we join with those who have different faiths, who believe in the cause of freedom, whether it's our Jewish brothers, whether it's those from the mosque, whoever they may be, we stand heart to heart and declare that we will not give in to racism. We will not be quiet. We will speak out loud and clear that our voices are heard. We will not walk with our heads down, we walk with confidence. I speak again, not just as a pastor, but as a father, to tell my sons and my grandsons that we are who we are by the power of God. God has created us as gifted, anointed African-American men who love God, love our families, and have learned how to work and make a difference in this world. So today, join us in prayer as we stand together fighting any kind of racism, any kind of ill will, any kind of prejudice. And we will declare on this Tuesday that our vote will count, that our voices will be heard, and we will change the course of this country once and for all. Enough of black men being killed for nothing. Take your foot off of me, I can't breathe. But guess what? I'm breathing now, talking now, and still standing now. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, we gather this morning not only praying for the sick, the shut in, the bereaved, but, oh God, we pray for this nation, this world of ours, that's once again seeing racists rob us of our dignity and our heritage. Oh God, this morning, send forth your mercy that we might declare, oh God, that we stand together shoulder to shoulder fighting anything that would seek to destroy your people. Give us, oh God, wisdom patience and endurance so the fight that we fight will not be with cardinal weapons but oh God that we will have the weapons of your power of your strength of your mercy of your grace we know oh God we're not victims but we're victorious that no weapon formed against us shall prosper oh God right now break down those shackles that have been listed for years and years Free us, O oh God, from anything that would keep us from being our true selves. Take away the shame, the pain, and help us to know that you created us in your own image. Black and we're proud. Standing tall, unashamedly say I am who I am by the grace of God. 
Oh God, this morning, we thank you for our brothers and sisters who are walking with us. May, oh God, their walk be side by side, heart to heart. And may, oh God, we live in such a way that we give you glory, honor, and praise in all that we do, even as we protest, even as we speak out that our words are tempered with your love and with your power and with your grace. Thank you for those men and women of God who are there on the front line, Pastor Waller, Pastor Mitchell, Pastor Tyler, and others, oh God, who declare that they will not see their brothers and sisters killed anymore. So together, oh God, we fight the fight. Give us the victory. In the name of Jesus Christ, do we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, Agape. Let's give God praise. Yeah.
sisters as you share with us in your home I remember when tragedies like this occurred we would all gather in the church and begin to give God praise we would not let the news we heard on Saturday turn us around from Sunday when we would gather and worship God so I would ask now in spite of the fact that our hearts may be heavy that you would join us in worship this morning I'm going to ask the choir just to sing that again and we're going to just act like you're present right here. God is present right here. But what would we do after a tragedy that occurred? We'd gather the church and give God praise. Come on, one more time. Come on, everybody. Stand on your feet in your home and join us in praise this morning. We serve a God who's still active working in our behalf. God is still active working in our behalf. We believe in God. We trust God. We depend on God. Come on, right now, in your home. We believe in God. that the God we serve has all power because of his power we can make it thank God today for this worship experience and again thank you for joining with us we are grateful to God today that we can come into your home and share with you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and our doors are not closed we here in the house of God giving him praise. We will praise him throughout the week. Our Bible study, our noonday Bible study, our evening Bible study will take place on Wednesday. Wednesday we'll also have the pantry open for those in the community as well as in the church to come. And we pray that you will let somebody know that Bethlehem loves God and serves people. We will do that. Also pray that on this Thursday you will join us for our fireside chat. Reverend Triplin, our youth pastor, and I will share our perspective on what's going on in this world right now, in our city right now. Get two different perspectives and prayerfully, even if we might disagree, we still have the bond of oneness 
You can disagree with somebody but still not be separated from them. And so I'm going to ask him to share his youthful perspectives and I will share my age as well as some of the experiences and prayerfully we'd come together on the same page. Amen. So join us on this Thursday at 1230 as we share our fireside chat. Tomorrow morning, I'm asking you to join us in our Church Without Walls as we begin the week with prayer. And we need to pray now. So I'm asking all members of Bethlehem to join us tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Be a special time of prayer to pray, particularly for our city and our surrounding communities. Pray for this nation of ours. Pray you will join us on tomorrow evening. Our youth pastor will be sharing in a very significant service. Will you say something about the service tomorrow night? Yes, that service is actually happening tonight. This, this evening, we are going to be worshiping with Zion Baptist Church of Ambler, which is pastored by the Reverend Dr. Ernie Flores. And the purpose of this service, you're, you're familiar in our Holy Week, we have a Good Friday service in which we typically um, celebrate with the last seven words from the cross. This particular service is going to be the last seven words of unarmed black people. And what this is going to do is to give voice to George Floyd. It's going to give voice to Trayvon Martin. It's going to give voice to Brianna and all the others um, that have been uh, succumbed to this injustice that we've seen in society. Log in on Facebook Live. It will be shared to the church's Facebook page. I'm going to be preaching the second word which is coming from Trayvon Martin. He said as he was trying to fend off his killer, what are you following me for? That was what he said. We're gonna to look to God's word and bring voice to his statements as well as many others. It is gonna be a powerful time. It is gonna be a time of deep reflection. It's gonna be a time that is gonna be purposed to allow us to sit in this reality and think about the implications of what has happened and what the Lord is saying through us in it. So we look forward to that to this evening, and thank you so much for being part of that significant service tonight. We thank God for Pastor Flores and his heart, and we join with him. We would also ask that next Sunday, we will have, once again, drive-by communion, and the pantry will be giving baskets, blessed baskets, for those who are in need of food. And so you can come receive communion, and pick up a bag and take it to somebody else. Lay it on their doorstep. Let somebody else know you were thinking of them, praying for them. We thank God for our pantry workers, Michelle Bradley and all those who come to church two and three times a week to make sure that those who are in need of food are able to receive it. And on next Sunday as well, the third Sunday of June is Father's Day. And because of this crisis. We're not able to gather in the church, but next Sunday, when every man that's humanly possible would come to the church, not only receive communion, but receive a boutonniere. Our deacons are passing out boutonnieres to men. We want to see as many men, African-American men, Caucasian men, Latino men, Korean men, standing together saying, we are men of God, and we are standing with our families, and we're standing celebrating Father's Day on the third Sunday in June. So come out on next Sunday after our 9 a.m. service, drive by communion. And if you are able to, perhaps maybe even take a boutonniere to your father or to the man in your life on next Sunday. Amen. If you think I'm excited, I'm excited because God is doing some miraculous things even in the midst of all we're going through. We serve an awesome, mighty God. Let us never, ever forget that, that the God we serve is worthy to be praised. On this Thursday, we want to lift up all of our youth doing our Church Without Walls service. Many of our young people have lost a lot of their activities this year as a result of not having school and some of the things that they would normally be doing they're not able to do now. We want to lift them up. And so on next Thursday, we're going to have our youth leaders in prayer. They're going to be up early in the morning and would ask that you would join them so they can hear your voice and know that you affirm them and support them and love them and encourage them 
on next Sunday, we're going to launch a virtual scholarship effort in our church. We have some wonderful young people who are graduating from elementary school, junior high school, college. They may have missed their prom. They may have missed their graduation exercise, but we're going to do something special in the month of June. And we'll be sharing that next week. But next week also is the opportunity for us to sow into that ministry so that some young person will know that this church, Bethlehem Baptist Church, has blessed them. You've seen every week student of the month, students who are excelling academically, socially, and spiritually. Let us sow into their lives and make a blessing to them. Amen. It's time to give. And we are so grateful to God for all those who support this place called Bethlehem, the House of Bread, with their tithes and offerings. They do it online. You can give online. Many have come to the church and dropped it in the tithing box. Some have sent it in. We thank God for every gift. It's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. We thank God for those who sowed into the wow so that we can continue the work of the Lord even after we've gone home to glory. That our pantry will always be something that we can look forward to sharing with God's people. Interfaith Housing Alliance. On yesterday, we were able to sow into the Children's Hospital for Sickle Cell $5,000 as they did their walk. And I was on the line and heard how they were blessed to do their virtual walk yesterday. So we want to honor God by every aspect through our wow, through our charity giving, through our spiritual giving, through our tithes and offerings. The work of the church continues. We're not closed. We're open. Tell somebody we're open, doing God's will, doing God's bidding. It's time to give. Praise the Lord. To whom much is given, much is required. Let us honor God now with our tithes and offerings. Reverend Tripline, would you place that in the wild? I'll place these tithes and offerings in. And we're going to honor God with our gifts today. Let the church say amen. Let's worship God through our giving. The number's up on the screen. Worship, worship is what we do. Worship is who we are. Worship, worship, worship. Him. Worship God. Worship Him. Worship Him. Praise Him. Worship Him. God, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We know, oh God, that all things have come from you. So, Lord, bless these gifts. May they be used for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, do we pray. Amen. I would ask that you would keep the Palin family in prayer. Cheryl Palin was such a vital part of this congregation, serving in many capacities in the church, leading our marriage ministry along with her husband Joe, part of education scholarship ministry, usher, just a wonderful woman of God. And as a result of the family's request, the service will be private on Tuesday. However, they have made opportunity for you to give to one of those wonderful organizations that she was a part of, where she taught for many years. We will give that information out during the course of the week. But I would ask again that we keep this family, as well as many other families, in prayer. We know that this has been a difficult time for families, and yet we also know that God is real. And so we pray today for the comforting hand upon all of those families who have lost loved ones. Remember those who are sick and shut in, and the list is long, but God can bless every one of them. And so I would ask today that you take a moment, and in the silence of your heart, just be quiet now and let us lift up those grieving families, not only here at Bethlehem, but all over this country.
Amen. Come on, Agape. Bless us in song.
gracious God, in the name of the one who's above every name, we worship you with a mass, without a mass, behind our mass, our worship is real. We pray, oh God, now as we worship you that you might bless me as I bring forth your word. Use me, God, this morning for your glory that my worship is real and that, oh God, I have decreased so you can increase. May the words that come from my heart and my lips give you glory, honor, and praise. And may, oh God, somebody be blessed today because I've heard from you in the wonderful name, your name, the name we worship, Jesus, Lord and Savior. Amen. Turn in your Bible to the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 26th and 27th verse. There you'll find the words of our text according to the New Living Translation. They read in this manner, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Anger gives a foothold to the devil. Let me read that again. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Anger gives a foothold to the devil. These words provide for my subject this morning. Who is behind your mask? Part one, who is behind your mask? On June 3rd, 2018, I preached the first in a series of sermons entitled, Take Off Your Mask. In that series, I talked about the need to take off the mask so you'll be honest with God. I would argue strongly that many of us were living two different lives. One way on Sunday and altogether different on Monday. George Floyd's death reminds us of how people live. They live with hate. They live with racism and anger in their hearts. Now almost two years later, to that same date, as a result of this coronavirus, it has been recommended that we wear a mask for our protection and protection of others. But in far too many cases, the mass has been anything else other than protection. I'm coming down your street, but behind that mass, there is fear, anger, bitterness, resentment. We see it everywhere, in the bank, in the marketplace, in our homes, and sad to say, even in the church, a mask that is to be worn for protection has become our battlefield. We carry this mask and hide behind the fact that we're angry, we're resentful, we're bitter, and it comes out. I've seen people in the marketplace 
who get angry because somebody else doesn't have their mask on. I've seen people who become angry in church because folks don't have their mask on. If I were here in this sanctuary, somebody would say, I know that's right. Because how we wear our mask also determines what's in our heart. So in this first message, I want to raise the question, who is behind your mask? Who are you are when you put it on? Who do you claim to be? Does your real self come out with your mask? Do you wear your mask in fear or do you wear your mask with faith? Do you wear your mask with love or do you wear your mask with hate? It all comes out how we put this one mask on. The mask may cover our mouths, may cover our nose, but it does not cover our heart. What's in your heart will come out, mask or no mask. So when you put your mask on, who do you trust? Who do you believe in? Do you wear your mask with fear? I've seen folk who become upset. Their minds are troubled. Their hearts are heavy. The mask is supposed to be for protection. Who are you protecting? What's behind your mask? There ought to be a humble spirit under your mask. So whether you have your mask on or off, it ought to reveal your humility. It ought to reveal your faith. Others will know what's behind your mask, even if you try to disguise it. It comes out. So one thinketh, so he is. It comes out. There is a standard to which we're called to live. This coronavirus does not give us an excuse to live any kind of way. In fact, I would add that because we've seen killing, it does not mean that we can act any other way also. We have to act like we know who we are and who we are. We can protest, but it has to always be done in the will of God. Get angry and sin not. So again, I ask the question, what's in your mask? What's behind your mask? What's in it? Take a deep look at the word of God today. It calls on the people of God to live a life pleasing unto God. As we walk around the text, Paul, the humble servant of the Lord, wants his fellow believers to put on a new nature of Christ. Throughout the chapter, he encourages the people of God to have a clean heart and to live lives aligned with Christ. Paul goes to great lengths to calling them to put some old things off and put some new things on. Know that Christ has poured his spirit so we might walk with truth and love. God has called us to live a life worthy of pleasing him. We cannot do what we want to do or say what we want to say. We cannot allow ourselves to give way to the flesh. The flesh is weak. And when you put your mask on, it may expose your flesh. I wish I were a better preacher because I hear folk talking about make sure you have your mask on. But they have their mask on, but they also have anger and resentment in their heart. We're supposed to be protecting one another. You can't protect anybody when you have ill will in your heart. We're supposed to love one another. He says, let everything you say be good and helpful 
so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Lord, have mercy. It's important we speak with kind words, gentle words, words of encouragement, words that help, not hurt, words that heal, not bind people's spirits. Words do hurt. Use words that help somebody. Don't say things in anger and you can't take them back. Don't cuss folk out. Yes, there are church folk who cuss folk out. I said it and I meant it and it's true. And you can cuss somebody out without saying one word of profanity, dumb, ignorant. That's not pleasing unto God. Nobody wants to say amen. I'll say amen for them. Say words that help somebody, not hurt somebody. Don't be so quick to pass judgment on somebody. Don't be so quick to lay somebody out. Don't be so quick to speak your mind. Sometimes what you think is not always acceptable to say to somebody else. Have wisdom. Know when to speak and when to be quiet. If your words are not going to help somebody, then keep it to yourself. You can't say everything you think. The devil takes advantage of that. So again, the question is, because you don't get it yet, who is behind your mask? Last week, I went to Wawa's to get a sandwich. They had a sign on the door. It says, do not enter without a mask. But then it also said, put a smile behind your mask. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we all had a smile behind our masks? When you take off your mask, what do you see? Anger? Resentment? Put a smile behind your mask. I would also say, put love behind your mask. Put gentleness behind your mask. Put peace behind your mask. Put humility upon your mask. Put something behind your mask that's going to help you become a better child of God. Put it behind you. Don't leave home without it. Keep God under your mask. He's our protector. He's our shield. He's our provider. Keep God under your mask. Don't walk around in fear, but keep God in your heart. Know that God for you He's more than the world against you. We're going to get through this, so keep God in your heart. It's interesting. If the coronavirus won't kill you, your anger might. Because it'll lead to you having a stroke, a heart attack. When you get angry, you put yourself in jeopardy. Humility is not weakness. Be strong. Know who you are. Act like you're a child of God. Don't always say something that's going to offend somebody else. Keep prayer under your mask. Pray. Talk to God. Lean on God, depend on God, call on God, pray. Before you put your mask on, pray. Before you leave the house, pray. Before you go to work, if you got a job, pray. Before you get in your car, pray. Control your tongue. When you wear your mask, don't let anger get under it. The word says, don't go to bed angry. Lord, have mercy. Folk wake up in the morning mad. It's a new day. I'm still mad about what happened yesterday. Get over it. Can't appreciate a new day because you're still angry. Don't let the sun go down. You don't have to wait till the sun go down. You're angry before the sun even comes up. What you're angry about? Everything. Don't like anybody. Can't say anything good to any, anything good about anybody. Control your tongue. Control your anger. The Lord takes no delight in that which is evil. Have mutual respect for one another. 
If somebody doesn't have on your mask, if you have to say something, say it with gentleness. Don't get angry. I see folk on the beach. I see folk who act like there's no coronavirus at all. They're just walking happily along. Even I saw folk demonstrating yesterday in the city of Philadelphia and around the nation. No masks. They angry already. Before they put their masks on, they didn't have a mask. We're called upon to love each other. And love is hard to find these days. Even in the church, it's hard to find true love. I like you, but I don't love you. We're called upon to love people across racial lines, across political lines, across economic lines. We're called to love one another. So again, I ask the question, because you just don't get it yet. What's behind your mask? And I'm going to preach a sermon in this series of sermons now, how the mask has become designers. You know, we got all kinds of masks now. You got a blue one, a red one, a pink one. You got all kinds of emblems on, all kinds of sayings. I'm a child of God, yet you got this mask on you so mean. It's become business. Even got to talk about having vending machines where you can get a mask. Just put your money in and get a mask. And when the church does open, everybody's going to come in with a mask. I hope they have something under their heart. And when they come into church, they don't come in mean, mad, and glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. Not, not mad, glad. Dress for success. Don't let your mask be a disguise for who you are. We're called to bear each other's burdens. And that's what this coronavirus has taught us to do, to be concerned about. What about the people who are on the front line? What about the people who risk their lives, even with a mask on, they risk their lives to help somebody else? We've seen that. We can't lose sight of that. The countless people who are helping other people with or without a mask. What would you do if you had your mask on and somebody got sick? Would you touch them? Would you help them? Don't sin. By letting anger control you. That's the word of God. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Sometimes anger controls us. We're not in control. Anger is controlling us. And some of us like to be angry. We have adopted to anger in our hearts. We don't know any other way to live other than anger. Every time you see them, they're angry. What are you angry about? Nothing. I'm just angry. Have you ever seen some angry folk? They're angry all the time. Good meal, they're still mad. Clothes on their back, still mad. Lord bless them, still mad. Still angry about what happened 20 years ago. Can't get over it, still angry. Angry at family members for something they said or did. Angry at themselves. Anger gives foothold to the devil. And don't you think the devil's not busy now? He was busy yesterday while we were trying to protest. He's busy now even while you got your mask on. Some of you are going to leave the church today. There's not too many people here. But somebody else is going to get in your way with your mask on, and you're going to forget who you are. And guess what? When you walk in the house and you take off your mask, you're still angry. Because the mask has not really fully totally revealed who you are. Oh, God. Don't allow anger to take away your spirit in God. Don't go to bed with anger in your heart. Don't let anger continue to 
foster itself and build itself up. Do you know what? If you're angry over a little thing, before long it will grow and become so huge you even forget what you're about, you're angry about, and it will just grow and develop, and then you pass it on to your children and your children's children. You, you don't know why they're angry. They're angry because you told them how to be angry. Let me paint this picture. The next time you go to church or the next time you go to the market, before you go out, Talk to God first so that if somebody comes up to you in, in a way that you might feel they're offensive to you, be still a moment. Think about what you're going to say before you say it. Don't be so quick to pass judgment on somebody else. Don't be so quick to rush into this whole matter of being ungodly. If I were a better person, and a better preacher, you hear that. Do you have a forgiving heart? God has forgiven you. There ought to be some forgiveness behind your mass. There ought to be some thankfulness behind your mass. There ought to be some mercy behind your mass. Do you realize also the countless people, the numbers have gone over 100,000 who have lost their lives and God has blessed us and you're still here. You ought to be grateful that you can still put a mass on. Come on, somebody talk to me. You ought to be grateful that you still can put a mass on and God, you ought to thank God this morning you can just put a mass on your face. When you wake up in the morning, thank God for a new day. Thank God for the blessings he's given to you. Morning by morning, new mercy. When you wake up in the morning, give God praise for the day. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. Give God thanks for this day. This is the day that God's given to us. Let us honor God today by trusting him, by leaning on him, by depending on him. Let us honor God whether you have a mass or doesn't have a mass. Honor God in all that you do. And even if you get tested, listen to me, if you get tested and it is negative, doesn't mean that you cannot get the virus. So don't walk around all proud. I don't have it. I was tested negative. That's not gratitude. Be humble. Thank you, God. I didn't get it this time. <laughs> Help somebody else during the course of the day. You know what I've noticed in this coronavirus? That, and this is another sermon, but I'm giving you a sneak preview. That, that before the coronavirus, everybody was walking around. Look at me, selfie, selfie, selfie. Look at me, selfie, selfie, selfie. I got a picture here. I put all this stuff on Facebook. Look at my stuff. Look at my stuff. Now, some of us miss relationships with others. Yourself is not that important anymore. You miss, if you have any real humanity, you miss some family and friends. You realize some things have changed in terms of priorities. And hopefully behind your mask is not only a sense of gratitude, but a sense of awareness of how good God has been to you that you still can remember. So behind your mask, have a heart of thanksgiving. If you hear nothing else I say, have a heart of thanksgiving. Thank God today that you can put a mass on. Thank God today he's protected you. Thank God today that you have been blessed by God. There's forgiveness behind your mass. There's grace behind your mass. There's mercy behind your mass. There's love behind your mass. God has given you everything that you need. There's strength behind your mass. There's power behind your mask. God has given you all that you need so you don't have to walk around like you're defeated. You are a child of God, mass or no mass. God has blessed you. God has anointed you. God has strengthened you. You can give God praise even with a mask. I've learned something, that with a mask, your voice can always be clearly spoken. So I take my mask off. Folks say, Pastor, why are you up there preaching? You don't have a mask on. Well, I could not speak as clearly as I want to speak with a mask. It muffles my voice. Some of you need to be muscled with your voice. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So I put my mask on so I can be heard. And I thank God for his protection with or without a mask. 
And some of us are so busy looking at somebody else, we fail to see our blessings. So praise God when you put your mask on. Your voice may be muffled, but God can hear you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He knows our thoughts. He knows what we're thinking before we even think it. So give him praise behind your mask. Let your mask be worn with love and grace and thanksgiving. Let your mask be a revealing factor that God has blessed you. Wear your mask with proudness, with gentleness, and with kindness. Wear your mask like you know who God is and how God has blessed you. Wear your mask giving God praise. Wear your mask standing on the word of God. Wear your mask trusting God. Wear your mask looking to God. Wear your mask knowing that God for you. He's more than the world against you. Wear your mask in the marketplace. Wear your mask as you walk down the street. Wear your mask acknowledging that God has blessed you to put it on. And because he put it on, you're not going to change who you are. You're going to still walk with God. You're still going to trust God. You're still going to depend on God. Mask doesn't reveal who I am. Mass is just a reminder of what God has done for me. Has God been good to anybody? Has God blessed anybody? Has God healed anybody? Has God saved anybody? Has God delivered anybody? Wear your mask to the glory of God. I'm almost finished. When I leave here today, I'm going to put my mask on. But I'm still praising God. I'm still thanking God for this day. I'm going to put my mask on and thank God to give me another opportunity to see a new day. And if I see somebody without a mask, I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get upset. I got mine on. I'm not going to get angry with them because they don't have theirs on. Maybe they don't know the Lord yet. Or maybe they have it on. They're walking in fear. When I put my mask on, I'm walking, trusting God every step of the way. I know somebody here recognizes that God is for all of us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Anybody able to say in their home, God is good, greatly to be praised. God is merciful. God is kind. God is just. God is fair. God is loving. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So once again, who is behind your mask? Take a moment. Think about that. Some of you right now have a mass for every day. One for Sunday, one for Monday. One for Tuesday, one for Wednesday. It's almost like you're closed. You don't got a mass now to meet your entire that you're going to put on. You're going to wear a red dress or a blue suit. So you got a mask that matches that. Make sure your mask matches the heart of God. I can't stop. I don't have anybody tell me here to stop, so I guess I can just keep on preaching. I mean, I'm in the sanctuary almost by myself, so nobody's going to say, sit down, pastor, because nobody's hardly here, so I'm just going to preach till you get it, who's, on, who's behind your mask. Some of you won't get it. Some of you already switched off. I, I heard that before. But it's important because when you hear the word, you have to apply the word. So this is not just a sermon that you just hear. It's a sermon that might be applied to your life because before you go out, you got to put on a mask. You can't go in the store without a mask, so you got to put it on. You need some food? Put that mask on before you go get that food. Need some chicken? You better go in there and put that mask on first. You won't be able to get no chicken. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to make it plain, Reverend. You talking about drive up, pick up food? You still have to have a mask on when you go there and pick it up. When you go to the bank... And guess what? Some places tell you you can't come in without a mask. Whenever we open the church, I, I feel like preaching. Whenever we open the church, I don't know what we're going to do with the folk who, who might decide to come in without a mask. How are we going to talk to them? 
You can't come in here, you don't have a mask on, but there's a way to talk to folk. This is the house of God. And you got your mask on, you're still angry. So you have not done anything. We're going to have masks for everybody. But there may be somebody who comes in who's physically challenged, mentally challenged. How do we deal with that? In the house of God, there may be some come who might come in with alcohol on their breath. You know what that is, because how would you know if you haven't smelled it? And they might be boisterous, and they might say, well, I don't have it. How are you going to deal with it? There's a way to deal with everything. There's a way to handle every situation. I'm finished. Don't turn it off yet. I'm almost finished. But one more time, who's behind your mask? Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you stripped of our ego, our pride, our self-righteousness. And ask, oh God, you look into our hearts. Oh God, as we have been told to wear these masks, may they not, oh God, take away from who we are. May, oh God, we always walk with humility, love, and kindness in our hearts. May we never walk in fear, but always in faith. May, oh God, our masks be worn for the right purpose, to protect ourselves and protect others. Not to harm ourselves or harm others, but to protect. And we know, God, you are a great protector. So, God, right now, as we move in this first part of this series of sermons, may, oh God, somebody find some help as they deal with this coronavirus, that they deal with unable to have relationships and spend time with family and do some other things that we have been accustomed to doing six feet away or having to wear a mask or anything else that had been said that we must do. But help us, oh God, to know that this too shall pass and we want to come out of it stronger and not lose our witness, not offend you, more than that, oh God, praise you. May, oh God, somebody, somebody hear the word today who's full of anger, full of rage, full of pain. Speak, Lord. Remove anything in our hearts that would hinder us. Cause us, oh God, to take inventory of our own lives to see where we are in this journey. To be honest, some of us have become weary and worn. Some of us have allowed ourselves to become angry, even at you, blaming you for this coronavirus, blaming you for what is happening now. But God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we know that you're not the originator of this coronavirus. We don't know who is, but we know we serve a God of love. So you're not punishing us, oh God, and we can learn something from it, even though it may not be the best medicine right now. We still can learn something from it to develop a deeper relationship with you, to change our priorities and put things in place that need to be in place, to build on our relationships with one another. Help us, oh God, to see what is clear in our hearts and minds so that when this virus is over, we know it's been helpful to us to change and develop a deeper, intimate relationship with you and our family and others. May, oh God, today we find the word not only inspiring, but convicting. So when we put on our mask today or tomorrow or next week, we'll ask ourselves, who is behind this mask? Prayerfully, Lord, you are behind it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. There may be someone today who would like to unite with this church. We're not a perfect church, not a perfect pastor. We serve a perfect God. You can become part of Bethlehem by 
by simply calling the church, checking our website. There's a page on there how you can become a part of the church. But it may not even be Bethlehem. There's an opportunity for you to be part of some house of God. It could be Enon, could be Salem, could be Temple Moore, it could be some other facility, some other place of worship. There's a church for everybody. Don't allow this mass to keep you from being part of the fellowship of God so you can grow and develop and be all that God would have you to be. Thank you once again for blessing up your presence today in your home. We pray today that somehow, somewhere you've been blessed. Don't forget to join us in the morning as we will share prayer for this nation, for our city. Once again, I'm going to ask Reverend Tripline to give us information for this night at 7 o'clock. Reverend Flores. Tonight on Facebook Live, we will be worshiping 7 p.m. This will be shared to Bethlehem's Facebook page. Make sure that you press the share button. Let someone know that we are worshiping and we are giving voice to the voiceless. Sadly, those that we will commemorate do not have the opportunity to speak for themselves on this evening, but we will speak for them. We will say their names and we will preach the word of God. We're looking forward to worshiping with you as we give voice to the concern of the day in our lives. Once again, I want to take the opportunity because this service could not help happen without the support of so many. Our chairman of our deacons, Deacon Wayne Holliday, and chairperson of our trustees, Darren DeVoe, chairperson of our deaconess, Monte Oates, our media ministry, our cameramen, Joe Wingen, our musicians, those who have also come to be part of this service. And we're grateful to God every Sunday Gene Flores provides flowers on the altar at no cost. And today I'm going to ask that uh, one of our faithful deacons, Deacon Patterson, would take this flower home to his mother who just finished her first chemotherapy treatment. I'm going to also ask that Deacon Tom Richards would take this flower home to his wife whose mother passed just a few days ago. And we're grateful to God that God has blessed us with wonderful people in our community across racial lines. So we do not want to develop this kind of stereotype that people of other color are all mean and bad. And that goes for police officers too. I'm not here to try to justify police officers, but I can tell you that uh, like in every profession, there's some good and some bad in every profession of life. And we got to weed those individuals out. We got to weed them out. I also would encourage you to vote. And one way you can weed them out is by voting not just police officers, but judges and politicians, all those who have no heart to serve God's people. Take a moment before we leave. Spend a moment in silence. Thank God for his blessings. In your home right now, just take a moment and lift up your hands if you can. Thank God for this day. I thank God for Pastor Albert Franklin Campbell, Pastor Emeritus in the Mount Carmel Baptist Church. I thank God for Pastor Waller and all the things that he does. Pastor Mitchell, who made sacrifices so that people could be tested. Rabbi Marx and others who stand shoulder to shoulder with us. For those police officers here at Bethlehem. For our new police commissioner in the city of Philadelphia who has an awesome responsibility to do what's right for all of people. Let's pray for peace as the demonstrations continue. Don't forget our fireside chat on Thursday. We're going to ask Reverend Tripline to give us a benediction. I thank God for him and for all the work he does day in and day out along with this pastor.
As we pray, I want to bring our attention also to the Vine Sunday School. We are so thankful to God for the work that they have been doing and making sure that our children still have a space to learn God's word, to be heard, to be present in the moment. And as they have their classes today, I will look to spend some time with them just to swing by in their classes on Zoom. We're praying for them and we want to put them to know that they are not alone, that they are not without a church that loves them and is praying for them in this time. As they are navigating this as children, they're navigating this without some of the understanding that we have, but this is their new reality. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are present with us. And for your presence, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for being an omnipresent God that sees all and knows all that we go through. We say thank you, God, for this worship service has been a provision for us to be encouraged, for us to know that we can continue to march forward and not get weary. Thank you for this, Pastor. We thank you for the message, and we thank you, God, that you are yet working on us, that even in the midst of the storm, we pray to emerge from the ashes of this as pure gold, as people who have been tried and true, tested but passing, with high marks, we pray that we make you proud. Bless us as we depart from this place, but we know that we're not departing from your presence, for we know that you are present with us. Continue to make your presence shown in our lives as we live lives that glorify you. Everything that we say, everything that we do, this week and of the days of our lives, bring glory to your awesome and matchless name. It is this name of Jesus the Christ that we do pray. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.